Lord has some good news for you this morning. Yeah, <laughs> he does. Um, whew, being a way maker, that is a strong word for each of us today. Um, and I, it's all about asking and receiving. And I, I just feel like so often I ask the Lord for things and I throw it out there and I'm like, yeah, I hope he does something for me about that, you know? Because I have faith. I have faith that something will change. Something will be given to me. But the part I forget so often is to actually receive what he has for me. Like to, to be conscious of the act of, I've asked, Father, now what, what do you have in return for me? And so I just feel like whatever your thing is that you're asking for this morning, I just feel like I want us to all assume the position, okay? Hold your hands out. Whatever that big thing is, Father God, you already know what it is. So I just, I just pray right now that each of us just take a minute and lift that thing to him because you are the way maker, Lord. And now open your hands, open your heart and say, Father God, I receive. Because he's going to tell you something. He's going to give you a word or a picture. And he's going to say, this is what I have for you. What you've given to me, I give you this in return. So Father God, I receive blank. Whatever that is, fill it in the blank. And if you don't have anything right now, that's okay. Say, Father God, I look forward to seeing what you're going to do with this. Because I give it to you and I have the faith that you're going to turn it in to something that you're making a way for me. and then live it out and praise him and thank him. And we love you, Jesus. Thank you that you're the way maker. Thank you, Lord. Let's just soak a little more. Get your hearts open and just receive. We're going to ask the Lord to bring a, a miracle, the gift of healing, uh, and the gift of miracles into the room. Some of you may need a he healing miracle and uh, in your bodies. If you do, just raise your hand. Uh, Mary needs a healing miracle. Janet just found out she's got really bad knees. Like her bone on bone is grinding, so she's going to have to have some cut. Either gets healed or gets surgery. So, Lord, we just pray now for a miracle. We need a physical miracle. We ask that the, the healing heat of the Holy Spirit would come and touch those areas of our bodies that need healing. Jesus, you're the healer. Now, if your heart's hurting, if your heart's broken, put your hand on your heart. If, you gotta, if, you're, getting, if you're feeling a broken heart right now, just something is not, not where it needs to be relationally or in your heart with the Lord or in your heart with people or your heart's breaking over something you've seen, just put your hand on your heart and say, Lord, heal my heart. Heal the cause of my broken heart. If it's a torn relationship, maybe with you or, or people you love, just pray, Lord, would you heal that relationship? I'm praying for a miracle. I'm praying for a miracle. Heal our broken hearts, our wounded hearts. You heal the brokenhearted. So, Lord, we're asking for Relational repair, restoration, and miracles. However that's going to play out. Yeah. So again, just receive miracle. Lord, we're going to go so far as to say we want to see resurrections. 
resurrections, things that have died and need to be raised supernaturally from the dead. Resurrections, Lord. Lord, come. Just pray, Lord, heal our broken hearts. Yeah. in the spirit just about three minutes ago. It was unbelievable to see that. Okay. Cool. Well, how we doing on the Daniel fast, everybody? Doing okay? Great. Awesome. How's that no caffeine thing going for you? Not so good? Okay, well, that's... That's the point, I guess, isn't it, right? Um, how many of you have been watching our little video clips? Have you been liking them? Have you been liking them? How about, how about that little clip I did with Amy? Was that just like drop dead awesome? How about Josh? That was super cool. You're going to see Carol and Kim. You're going to see them, I think, tomorrow. Andrew is today, right? Andrew was, Andrew was amazing. So, uh, Mar yeah, Marcy Willis and Norm. How about, how about the crab trees? Fantastic. I mean, they all have been amazing. I got the De La Cruz's last night, and they're on 16. So, yeah. Yeah, I'd like to actually do you guys and your family. So, yeah. So, anyway... Uh, how about Yenny and James? Wasn't that cool? Uh, James, you're just, uh, you know, it was fun to capture your heart on that. Uh, so, yeah, so let's keep pressing in on this uh, whole, uh, you know, journey that we're on. It's pretty exciting. It's happening around the country. So we're just a part. It's actually around the world, Mary. Yeah, thank you. Right. So we have a couple of really important things for we, uh, that we want you to hear. Let's get the business things out of the way because I want Mary to come up and just share a little bit about the wow and, and the mission trip. So before that, uh, let's take our offering before we release kids. Is that good? Um, so if you want to throw it uh, as, oh, we're going to do that together. Let's stand. We're going to pass our basket whatever it is we call it. As we receive today's offering, we are believing you for a people living for your glory, sons of God that are sourced by their Father in heaven, disciples that make disciples, heaven opened, earth invaded, storehouses unlocked, and miracles created. Dreams and visions, angelic visitations, declarations, visitations, and divine manifestations, anointing, gifting, and calls, positions and promotions, provisions and resources to go to the nations, souls and more souls from every generation, saved and set free, carrying kingdom revelation to their families, neighbors, friends, and nations. Thank you, Father that as I join my value system to yours, you will shower favor, blessings, and increase upon me so I have more than enough to co-labor with heaven and see Jesus get his full reward. Hallelujah! Woo! All right. Hey, real quick, before Renda comes up, I wanted to do this real quick because that declaration prayer we just did was um, it's extremely powerful when we attach finances to faith. And uh, just real quick, I'm going to have Adley share just a quick dream because we declare this in prayer every day that, that Jesus gave her a dream last night. And what was the dream, Adley? Um, 
So I was traveling to a foreign country, I have no clue what, um, and I remember saying to a person, um, I don't want to die. And um, he says, well, what do you mean? I say, well, I'm going there to give out Bibles and preach, right? He said, yeah, and I said, that's not allowed, so I don't want to die. He said, well, we'll be okay. And so we get there, and apparently I stay in a castle. And um, the... Are you royalty? No, no. And um, then the person who, uh, like the king, I guess, that's when the king, he doesn't believe in God, so we had to make the Bibles. And so every time we made a Bible, we, we piled them up, and then he burned them up. And so me and this person went on a walk, and I said to him, I want to start preaching now. And he said, well, you have to be patient. We have to um, start doing, we have to make the Bibles first. And so I remember um, we're making the Bibles, and I remember just walking around the room, trying to rehearse what I'm going to say to the people, and I don't remember what those words were. And then finally we get the Bibles all set, and we go to the house, and it kind of looks like, um, it was weird. I guess it was old-fashioned. And I knock on the door, and a person opens and hands them the Bible, and I start telling, telling for them. And we go to door to door and doing the same thing over and over again. And then I wake up. Come on. Yeah, isn't that cool? And so Adley journaled that this morning, and then she's like, Dad, I feel like I'm supposed to share this this morning. And so thank you for being so brave, sweetie. You're so brave. And, and I think we want to be encouraged. We want to be encouraged that the Lord is moving. He's speaking through, quote, dreams and visions and visitations. Like, we have future missionaries here. We have, uh, the Lord is calling children to bring the good news of the gospel to their friends and to the nations, and we're seeing that. And so let's be encouraged as a church family, both young and old. Amen. Yeah, would you just pray? Do you want to pray? What's on your heart? You want me to pray? Okay. Lord, we just thank you for this vision, this dream, and we also receive it for all of us this morning. And just as we gave tithes and offerings right now, we just thank you. We attach our faith to you, Jesus, and say you're our hope. You're the love of our lives. And we pray for a boldness to come upon believers. Lord, I pray that for a boldness to come upon our church family, our children, all of us to preach the good news of the gospel, to uh, be proclaimers of the word, to give away the word of God, be a people of faith and hope on this earth, and that the nations would know your name. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Wow, that was beautiful. Um, So, Renda, come on up. We, we're going to do next week. You're going to give a little special on next week? Yeah. I'm just, gonna, um, just a reminder, next week will be the agape meal, which are normal agape meal, but we're also be breaking the fast together. Um, so the assignments are on the sheet. It'll also be in the weekly email. Um, and so just wanted to remind you guys and encourage you guys with that. I'm the Kansas City Janet, you went big. Uh, so, uh, just a little piece of tr- uh, translocal tribal news uh, that has really been a long an- uh, a prayer request. But, um, Ray, you know, the De La Cruz family is moved to the inner city to kind of be a part of that inner city family. And just like three days ago, Ray Jr. and Stephanie, their children, the, Ray's, Ray and Emma's firstborn son, uh, Ray Jr. They call him Little Ray, but he's huge. And uh, they have three grandchildren, and so they moved into the church house on the campus in the inner city. And so uh, that is a very big uh, surge or jolt of life that's come into the inner city. So, yeah, that's exciting. So, okay. Um, Mary, come on up and share. This is everybody say, hey, Mary. Hey, Mary. <laughs> That was great. Hey, hi, Michael. Listen, I really, um, just when you were doing that, when you were doing that, I got, you know, I just heard that scripture. 
I was young and now I'm old, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken or their children begging for bread. And there's our children getting visions and going and wanting like Cora last week. And we've had Victoria Nathan, Grace. I saw Grace earlier. I don't know what happened. But um, I do want to just say that before I go into Mexico. But there's two things. We're having wows. It's been a break through Christmas. It's this Thursday night. And Daria Holler is coming to speak on human trafficking issues and the Freedom Challenge Ministry for women here at 6 to 8. And we really encourage you to bring people. This is a current, very huge issue in our world. It is the second biggest money maker quote in the whole world is trafficking women and children. It says that it's soon to maybe exceed the drug trade because they're all connected. And some of these people in the drug trade actually stated, well, you know, we did drugs, but you can only sell them one time. With women, you get a couple of years, and then we throw them out. And it's sick. It's more money, they said, and children. And so this is important to hear, because what Freedom Challenge does, well, she'll explain that, but their finances go for aftercare for women. And Solid Rock and children, and Solid Rock has partnered for many years with them. I even did one of those trips. That's a miracle. And uh, Daria worked for us, and um, Susan's been on a minute, who comes, Susan Brubaker. And so she's going to talk about how she's instructed. Josh has, Derek has instructed. They like Derek, too. And so I, left, I won't go further. But... Uh, <laughs> Uh, but I, uh, woo, yeah. But I just want to really encourage you because this is a current, real-time issue worldwide, and we really need to be informed about this. It's wicked, but we can't hide ourselves from it. And it's Christians that are truly doing the aftercare, the real aftercare of rehabilitation and offering life to these women and children. So that's on that, and that'll be, she's coming up from Denver. She's the coordinator of this, so she, she's pretty well informed on what's going on. We want to welcome her, okay? And she um, used to live here when she worked for Solid Rock, yeah. So next, I really want to bring up Mexico, because God, in San Miguel, this conference that you know Diana and I are going, and Diana had a family emergency, and she's going to be in Denver with grandchildren for this week because her daughter-in-law's father is dying, and she had to fly to her dad. So Bob and Diana are gone. But um, and she's going with me, and Diane Marquez, and the speaker for the bigger event, the two-day women's conference, on all of... Fully Alive, Emmanuel Issues are going to be in tables. There's 75 women signed up. That's unheard of. Mexican predominantly women. And so when we've gone before, we really needed translators. But this time, the beauty is Terry has been in touch with Marta, who was here last summer at Tribal with Esther. And Esther was here another year. It's Sivia's mother and good friend. They have translated, so we're going to be in table groups, and all of the questions for the small groups are all in Spanish. And then Spanish women that are leaders in the church will be leading the small group tables and in their own language. This is really a big acceleration, okay, huge. And... Um, they have it all planned. There's translations of parts of Terry's book. There's translations of Emmanuel journaling. It's all prepared. And these women volunteered in that church to do it all. And it was a lot of work. Yeah. And it's been really highly advertised. And now there's a cutoff. But, Ter but uh, Tammy texted me and said, who knows? There'll be probably more ladies coming. And many, many are not Christian women. So... Terry's going to have an opportunity to share on that. And then when the, two day, the Friday night, all day Saturday conference is over, then we're going to be Diane, Terry, 
myself, uh, Tammy, Marta, Esther, we're going to be doing a manual encounters and healings for, for the next three days before we come back. And the best news is through them, we're going to have the Mexican women with us that are, have been reading about it and studying and they're going to begin to be leading them. And so when we walk out, there's going to be a group capable in the body to keep this going. And to me, that's what it's all about. It's not flash in the pan. This is long-term. It's long-term relations with this church. Amy knows she was going years ago before it, you even had kids. No, maybe, yeah, before even kids, they were down with us at this church. And we have fruit from this church. As I told you, Moshe is now leading discipleship for men. Uh, we have Sivi on a mission trip at El Petro Chico. She's doing women's studies. She's doing children's ministries. She's translating. And David is in Maui with Foursquare, and he says, the big IT. These are three Mexicans that came on Solid Rock and lived and helped in this body. So it's our fruit going out. And to me, this is really a dream come true because we, when Drew and I moved there and went, there was really nothing like this. There was no anything for women. And to see 75 signed up and maybe more, that's amazing. And so this is all God. And, you know, we're going humbly and to be there to serve. And I'm excited about it. And Diana would be here if she could, dear Diana. And so, you know, and Diane Marcus, and she speaks Spanish. I mean, I've been brushing up, but it's bad. And uh, we need more like the Amy's and the Diane Marcuses that can, and Jess's that can speak in the future, in the future. But what we see is long term. They're planning to have some come to tribal this year. And it's infiltrating. It's like the yeast. You know, you put a little in, and it's spreading, spreading. It's taken time. This has been over like 12, 13 years. But it's spreading, 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 and it's going to take over the whole lo loaf. Amen. Stay here, Mary. Stay. Stay here. So I want to just note something, that it's the love and affection and relational connection that produced this. Your investment in those people in Mexico, you became a spiritual mama. To the, in this church, you became a spiritual mama, and you started loving these people, and you created a friendship with them. And we had started studies in small groups and yeah. healing prayers yeah. and stuff. Yeah, and, and it was your mama heart that um, built that bridge of affection and love and heart connection, and then that that just started... Then you, then you brought them and into... it's under authority, too. Well, yeah, but you brought them then into the family. You brought them into the, tri the tribal gathering. You said, hey, I... You know, I, I like to know you, but I'd like you to meet my people. That's true. Pat and, and Yeah, and, and, and so you basically became a relational bridge for these amazing people like Moshe to come and move here and be a part, and you helped facilitate that. We did. And then, then you said, hey, come to our big party on, in June. They come to the big party. They pick up the nutrients. They That's pick true. up the culture. of, And, and you had... You, th then it really increased yeah. it increased and then then what you then you got that mother heart and said i want to bring more of what we're working on together to mexico and they're doing it now we're, and it's coming it's, it's coming. coming and they're doing it even now right so you grabbed terry sullivan who is another one of the she's a mama in well she's one of the spiritual moms in the, well she's no bigger than you love she's she's a, a leader in the rock tribe she's a leader in, uh, in the Jesus Tribes movement as well. She's and so, life model. so Mary says, I want to take a little, a little army of mamas to Mexico and start something big. And, of course, we celebrate women in leadership. We celebrate women in ministry. And so we, we're pushing this because we want to see more women rise up into their calling. Okay? Especially there. It's still a machismo society. Yeah. Machismo. Machismo. Machismo and machismo, and whatever both, it is. Whatever. So, I mean, it's something. It's all of it. So, uh, so then she grabs Terry Sullivan and she grabs Diane Marquez. Oh, they're great. And these are, these are fiery women, fiery women. And then Diana Seebeck. 
So the four of them are going like a little sent out apostolic team. And they're going to impart the, the nutrients, the DNA of the kingdom yeah, to women. And you know it's going to nail men too. So, so uh, what, what we're hoping for is an ongoing movement. Yes. An ongoing movement of love. And so I think this is first of many. This is an official rock, you know, ministry trip, mission trip. We want to have many of these. So we want to be an equipping center, an ascending Amen. center. That you're, you're really modeling what we want to be. And so we want to equip people to follow Jesus on their own and to create little, little J3s, little house churches, and families, uh, vibrant families of Jesus. Amen. That's what we want. And so I want to thank you, Mary. You, well, you rock our world, love. Well, thank you. Yeah, what are the dates? Oh, we're leaving. Well, we fly on the 7th, but we have one of those to get a cheaper flight. You know, you go at 6 a.m. <laughs> yeah. And so we're... <laughs> Di yeah, so Diane and I are going to have to go down to Loveland and then get that, like, 4 o'clock bus mm -hmm. to the airport. Oh, yeah. And, or 3.30, one of those. Uh, yeah, which, well, the, the February, oh, February. February. So, that. yeah, that. February 6th, we go. We, we're on the flight the 7th, and we meet in San Miguel. We're all arranging to meet Terry and, and uh, Diane about the same time, okay. and then head. We're all due within a half an hour at the airport mm -hmm. there, if yeah. all goes well. 16th. This, well, we're, that's 10. Your okay. proof time off. Yeah, she had to get a, a, a letter of, uh, you know, like a, a pass. Yeah. You know, like a hall pass. I'm not even joking. Yeah, no, I get it. So, you know, you're co-mothering. You're co-mothering these kids. You know, it's true. You fill a lot of shoes, Mary. And so we're going to pray. Uh, this is not going to be the only prayer, and, but we are going to start taking offerings. Well, because we're covering it. Diana, yeah. Diana, and I are. Yeah, this is not untypical of mission trips to third world countries. Yeah, you cover it. You pretty much pay your own bill and pay for the conference itself. So, yeah. We've done that in Myanmar. We put yeah. on a, a conference for like 90 leaders, church planting leaders in Myanmar and paid for it yeah. out of the Rock Tribe. It was amazing, and it's still, it's still so manifesting well, fruit. So this is what's going to happen. We're going to, we're going to see more and more trips to the nations. Like Guatemala? Like Guatemala. I see us going to Denmark. I see us going to Europe and, and spreading this kind of insight into uh, biblical Christianity. Yes. So I'm going to pray for you, Mary, and, and all of the you. Team, just the team. The team, yeah, of course. And just extend your hand to Mary and, and Amy, come on up. Amy, come on up. Janet, come up and just... Kind of, why don't, you, why don't you pray, Amy? I think that yes, would be yes, yes. Because Amy knows this church. Yeah. yeah, thank you, Jesus. We just um, declare over my mom as she stands in the place, um, and she stands for Diane Marquez and Terry Sullivan and Diana Sebeck and Mary Arnold. We just say, blessed are you who goes in the name of the Lord. Right now, we just declare that you step into the anointing that God has put on your life for such a time as this to equip and impart hope to raise faith and expectation and to bring the power and fire of the Holy Spirit to these women. And we declare never the same over these 75 women, never the same, that they will taste and see the goodness of you, Jesus, the one who, um, who elevated women, who brought them from shame to honor, we declare that they will taste and see that you, Jesus, are good and that there will be a baptism of the Holy Spirit in fire. There will be an impartation of love and that um, there will be just a, a spark of revival that spreads through San Miguel and the whole Guanajuato region and beyond. And Lord, we just thank you that this isn't just some um, small thing in the Spirit. Lord, we ask for multiplied fruit, a hundredfold fruit. And we just um, pray for Diane and Terry, my mom and Diana, just that there would be incredible encounters with you, that there would be incredible power that they flow in and through as they yield and surrender to you. And we send them with a blessing full of faith that the fruit will be 
multiplied eternal for your glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, girl, women. <laughs> Wasn't that amazing? I just love what's going on around here. Um, so, a clear, a clear word over this family here in Laramie is to be an equipping and sending center. This is a really big thing. And uh, because typical models of church uh, promote passivity and, and attendance and not necessarily activity and participation. And we want to be a, a family that is really truly a, a family on mission, an apostolic tribe, which means that everybody gets to play. You know, everybody's important in a, in a tribe that is apostolic and thinks in terms of the nations, that means everybody gets to be equipped. And, you know, how many of you know that Jesus never invited us to be Christians? What a statement. You know what I mean? In the way that we would understand it. He never invited us to the Christian religion. He actually invited us to be apprentices. He goes, hey, come on, I want to train you, I want to teach you, and everything I've learned, I want to teach you. And I'll use people to do it, but I want you to be a follower of mine. I want you to, I want you to live the way I lived and do what I did. And, so, and I want you to do it 24-7. I want, you to, to be, I want you to be Jesus to people. I want you to bring me through your skin wherever you go. I'm not getting in a habit of taking you know, healing oil wherever I go into Walmart. I'm going into Walmart. I'm, I'm literally on a hunt. Yeah, I might be buying something, but I'm really looking for an opportunity for a man or woman of peace or a young person of peace. I mean, it's, it's literally overrun with, you know, university students. So any given moment could be an opportunity. And I've had lots of them, and I want to keep going. I want to live like this. I want to be Jesus to whoever I'm in front of. But it, it means thinking like that. It means cultivating that. So a person that operates... In the context, uh, in, in the reality of the indwelling Christ, they have a, a kind of a, th th there's three basic things you got to have. A prayer lifestyle, which is not just one way. It's conversational. It's interactive communication. Mostly listening more than talking. And then, then, there's, uh, then there's hearing. So I pray and then I hear. I try to hear the voice of God primarily through the word. And then... And then when I'm tuned in, then I feel the sense of, of burden and encouragement and directing. And um, I see the Lord guiding me through my day. So I try to stay in a real-time connection with Jesus in the Spirit. Uh, the, the primary evidence is where I'm in the fruit of the Spirit. Am I in gentleness? Am I in kindness? Am I relationally connected to, to people? Even people that I may not... Uh, that I may feel have offended with or hurt by. I want to I I de-enemy them and connect to them and love them apart from anything else. I don't want to be a person that stays in enemy mode. I want to get out of it real quick so I can connect with those people and be Jesus with them. So the fruit of the Spirit. Then I want to have the wisdom and the revelation of the Spirit. The wisdom is the application of the truth. You know, I want, to, I want to make decisions that are wise, you know, because unwise decisions always end up bad, <laughs> you know. So then I want, to, I want to move in the power of God. You know, I want to move in the, the power of his spirit. I want to move in the prophetic. I want to move in healing. I want to move in the power of the gifts. So now the way this happens is, is, a, is a lifestyle of moving toward this. In other words, it, it needs to be something that we as a people, this is what I wake up wanting to be. Like I wake up and I go, I want to be a man, a son of God, a man of God, a spiritual daddy that reveals what Christ is like, not to get them to look at me, but to see the Christ in me. I want them to be way more impressed with Jesus than they are me. And so that's what I wake up thinking. So typically I roll out early and, you know, I just... My body just gets me up. 
I haven't really needed an alarm clock for a long time. I just asked Janet. It's, sometimes I, you know, I could be fellowshipping with Amy at three in the morning, probably. Amy, we should, because <laughs> Amy will get up. Let's break, that. Let's break that. Yeah, we want to sleep hard. We want to get in that big REM sleep, right? And then we wake up fresh. So I love it when that happens to me at night, you know. But oftentimes I'm, I'm interceding through the night for big things, big issues. And a lot of big issues come into our life. We're in, we're in the middle of some really serious and big issues right now. Big ones, painful ones. And there's enough, right, you know, in our life, enough pain in our life at any given moment that it could, if I didn't have Jesus to gaze on, I'd, I'd be checking out. There's that much pain that I have to own or bear or hold in my spirit man. And I'm not, that's not poor me. I'm honored to be used by the Lord like that. But it's, if, if it isn't Jesus, it's nothing. I just tell you that. And we run a business and there's always something going wrong in a business. I mean, water leaks and things happening and it's nasty what you run into with properties. How many of you know what I'm saying? Properties and people. That's a good recipe for a pain in the rear, you know, in a, you know, a money pit. That's a good opportunity for a money pit. So uh, we've got a lot of them running around. So, okay, so now I also believe that I can't transform into Christ-likeness without people. There's absolutely no way unless I connect my heart with other people and get transparent and get humble and honest that I'm going to make it. Because skin, the skin of Jesus, is a big part of uh, the grace of God for transformation. So we have the word of God, we have the spirit of God, and we have the family of God. Those three are the context by which we grow into his likeness. Now, the harder one is the third one, to be honest. The harder one is the third one. Because... A lot of people are walking around with trauma, trauma-informed pain, and it doesn't take much to trigger that pain. In fact, the better you love, the more chances are you're going to bump into that pain, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to have really tough outcome. So we're going to have to mature to the point where we can manage through those moments, but nonetheless, we are called to be a family, and I'm so honored to be in this family. And I'm just one of many people in this family. As you'll, as you'll, if you're new here, you'll, you'll find out there's a lot of special people in our family. Every one of them is amazing. And so it's really good to be on the hunt for more friends in your own family, right? So the, the, the first building block in the kingdom relationally is two or three people. It says, uh, you know, where two or three are gathered, there I am. So we have to really upgrade our definition of church. Because most people think of church as a building, as a meeting, as a gathering, and that I'm, I'm going to church. I'm going there, and then I kind of passively enjoy the worship team or whatever. And I'm not called upon to be proactive. But we all know that's legitimate. A gathering in worship in a meeting like this is an illegitimate expression of church. But it's not the only one. Now, the big one is this, and I'm going to define it to you as best I can, as simple as I can. Church, I'm having church. I'm not, I am the church. I'm having church when my spirit, my heart is opened and connected to you around Jesus. And we transmit the life of Jesus between one another which comes in the form of affection or love or joy or the word of the Lord or prophetic words or encouragement or power. Whenever Jesus is transacted between us, then I'm doing church. I can do church anytime, anywhere, with anyone. And I can even do church with an unbeliever. That's a key thing you need to know because Emmanuel is always with me. So if I show up, Jesus shows up. And if I open my heart and I get them to open their heart, then they're hooked. Especially if joy is in the atmosphere. 
Joy is contagious. So I'm always kind of goofing around and having fun with somebody and I'm trying to listen to their story and connect with them and have some fun with them. The minute their heart opens, their relational circuits in their brain open, their heart opens in the Bible and I have a connection with them and wow, anything could happen at that moment. I'm literally having church. So church is all dependent on the level of my connection, my attachment, my bond, and my connection. And if it's a fear bond, it's not going to be church. But if it's a love bond, it's going to be church. Church is when there's a love bond and a secure attached connection. And Jesus is flowing through. So Mary and I, Mary called me up and said, hey, I want to get some tea because we're drinking, you know, we're drinking grass right now. <laughs> okay. And she, we show up and we, we just had an amazing time. This is beautiful, sharing stories and connecting and, you know, and, and working through some stuff that we're concerned about together. It was beautiful and it was spontaneous. And I don't, I don't ever meet with a woman other than my wife in, unless it's in public. I mean, I'm always super guarded with that. And, how, and typically it's, and, you know, so I'll never, you know, ever violate that, that value of that boundary, Okay. But we just, we had church. We are having church in, in Col, Col Creek, right? And we felt joy. And, and we felt connected. And we felt like we were on the same page. And it was fun. And she, Mary's sharing her heart. And I'm learning from her. I'm gaining from her. And we're just trans, transacting this encounter with Jesus together over, you know, what was that tea, what, that we drank, that red stuff? It was... It wasn't Red Bull, but it was, it was red something. Fla yeah, it was, we were drinking flowers, squeezed flowers. Okay, so, okay, so uh, now that building block, that, that redefinition of church is super important because it takes two people and Jesus to play. But I can actually do it with an unbeliever whether they know it or not because I can begin to draw them into communion with Jesus by drawing them into that connection. And that's love evangelism. That's affection evangelism. That's joy evangelism. And I'm telling you, it works. You, you hunt for the woman or man of peace who's, who's, been, who's been set up by the Lord to be open to the gospel. You can discern there's an interest. And by connecting with them, something is going to start happening in the spirit. So everyone wants to be competent in a two or three. You know, <laughs> I had Stephanie, Stephanie uh, De La Cruz said, Tim, you know, my people in, in our Assembly of God Church in Las Cruces, she's on staff there. She goes, what's your position going to be? Are you going to be the associate pastor, the assistant pastor, the youth pastor? What's your status and what's your title? That we know how to put, we know where to put you if you can tell us the title and what you're being called to do. And she goes, you know, frankly, I don't know. I don't think anybody has titles over there. And they go, what? That doesn't make any sense because they're in a traditional program-based legacy church. And I said, I'll tell you what, Stephanie, I'll give you a title. I said, here's what you do. You tell them, um, if you show up like Jesus, you can be the youth pastor if you're with a youth young person. You can be the children's pastor if you're with a child. You can be the senior pastor if the Lord is speaking through you. You can, be, you know what I mean. I'm not negating roles, okay? I'm not negating positions and roles, but I was saying, really, don't make a lot about a title or a role. Make a lot about who we are in Jesus. Let's bring Jesus. And she goes, "Wow, that's kind of freeing." I go, "It's really freeing. It's really freeing." Then, then you don't have to posture up. And pull rank over people. You just get to come in and low and slow and be a servant and love Jesus and bond with people and be a good friend. And watch what happens. I said, if you have earned secure attachment, by that I mean you really know how to love well, I'm going to tell you, you'll have all the authority you could possibly manage if you bring Jesus. Like that's outrageously awesome. And that's where we want to go as people. That's where I want to go. I want to go there. I want, to be, I want to be that kind of person. Not always that kind of person, but I want to be there. I'm going there. And, and we can help each other do that. And the starting point is twos and threes. 
And you know, I can have instantaneous twos and threes. I had a two to three. And by the way, the number isn't a legalistic thing. When I say a J3, don't worry about the number. The number is a figurative statement of, hey, a few people. It could be two, it could be three, it could be five, but it's kind of in and around there. Two or three people spun, you know, around Jesus. Now, if I make it more regular, it becomes a J3, but I can do a, a one-time J3, which is what I do with Mary. I had a one-time J3 over squeezed flowers, and it was wonderful, okay? And it was wonderful. I had church, and I felt, re- I felt, I, I, I felt elevated when we, were, when we were done and said goodbye. So this practice of doing church this way is something we want to become, we want it embedded in our culture. We want, it, we want to be intentional about it. Okay, so one of the things you can do in a J3 that's really powerful is you can bring the word of God into it. And the word of God brought into a J3 where you listen to the Lord together through the scripture is real powerful. By the way, my first J3 is with Janet. Janet is my first line of church. She's my highest church priority. We literally hug good morning every morning. She gets a little back rub, a little love, some eye contact and affection. We start our J3 with a hug because that's legal. And, but it's non-sexual. It's just a pure, gentle brother to sister, husband to wife. We start our day in the spirit that way. Every morning, right? Every morning like that. And so we, I start church with my wife every morning. Is that cool? So I want you to have that kind of vision that my assignment is to be like Jesus to Janet and to be consistently a gentle protector, consistently wash her with a word, consistently reveal Jesus to her. That's my job description, right? Doesn't mean I always do it, but that's the assignment from the Lord. Okay, so J3s are a way of life. Jesus plus three, the number three, isn't set in concrete. Now, how many of you think you could do a J3? Just raise your hand. Of course you could. And the the thing is, we want to demystify this thing and take it out of the, you know, I got to be a Bible scholar and a professional leader to do this. No, you don't. You just need to want more Jesus and want people. And you can do it. So I'm going to, today is a tool and it's, and it's an easy one to do. And we're going to practice this morning because we are an equipping center. That's what we do. We want to help you get the tools to be a church wherever you go. All right? So here's, here's one of these tools. And you can take, I got some extra copies, so you can take them if you launch a J3. All right, so we're going to have you go through and read. We're going to have you form a J3 this morning. Maybe it's a one-time J3. Find somebody that you feel safe with, okay? Nobody's asking you to be in an uncomfortable situation. And here's the other thing. You're not being required to share if you're not comfortable. You can just sit and enjoy the reading of the scripture. That's cool. Doesn't matter. No, nobody's under pressure. Now, and here's another guideline. Please, when somebody shares, this is not a chance to fix them to preach to them, to advise them, to judge them. Yeah, thank you, Amy. You don't, we don't get to judge somebody because they might pour out their heart and it's not a time for you to have opinions. Okay, it's really not. It's, it's time for, th- for them to feel seen. That's the most important thing. They need to feel seen and validated. And, you know, it doesn't mean you agree with them. They might say something completely off the wall. Okay, but that's Okay. We're not freaked out by that. People say things off the wall to me all day long. It doesn't freak me out. It's like they're on a journey. They're trying to explore what they believe, and they could probably change their mind next tomorrow. And so if I get my kidneys in a flush, I'm gonna, you know, it's not going to work. Well, I don't think I've ever said that. <laughs> Daniel, and hopefully, don't ever say that again, Tim. That was weird. <laughs> don't, yeah, Daniel, that was, don't ever say that again. All right. All right. <laughs> that was funny. That really was kind of funny, I think. 
Yeah, thank you, because I'm going to go flush my kidneys in a few minutes. I, just Okay, that's the last time. That's the last time. Oversharing. Cut it. Cut it. Jamie's like, yeah, don't, yeah, please don't invalidate me right now. Don't judge me. Stop judging me. I know you are. All right, so. All right, so. You get the point. It's, it needs to be a safe thing. And, you know, churches typically, when they start messing around with relational stuff, they stop feeling safe because most people don't have the tools to be safe. They don't have an awareness to be safe because we think it's our job to, you know, preach at people or something or judge them. And it's not at all our job. Our job is to connect them to Jesus through the doorway of kindness and gentleness, right? So, all right, so you can find a J3, and it could be your own family, a friend, somebody, you, you know, and just have some fun with this. But do read the scripture. You can go around the, the, the two or three or four that you have or five. Read the scripture one sentence at a time by each person. Now, the goal in a J3 is always participation. You really don't want someone to do all the talking. And that's true in a house church. You really, uh, the best leaders are not guys like me. <laughs> what? No, the best leaders are people that really are real interested in everybody else talking. Now, when I do put my facilitator hat on, believe it or not, I don't really talk that much. I ask questions. Okay, but when I'm in my training mode, I'm doing this right now. Okay, so be a facilitator by the sense of take great interest in people, ask questions, and be curious. So everybody gets to play. That's a big, important thing in a discipling-making movement. Everybody gets to play. Everybody gets to participate. So go through the re reading of the scripture. And then, uh, well, now hold on. Do a check-in first. Do your check-in first because that's most natural. In one minute, um, share with your J3 something you are uh, thankful for and why. Okay? That opens up your relational heart and gets you connected to Jesus, right? So take a minute. What you're thankful for and why, everybody gets to share. Then have someone pray this prayer. And then you pray that prayer. I just gave you that prayer. You can do it all the time. It really works, Ephesians 1.17. It's a powerful prayer. Then you read your passage out loud. There, there it is, number three. Go around the circle. Then four, ask these questions. Now, these are great questions you can use on a house church or a kingdom family, we call it. You can use them in a J3. But honestly, if you brought the word of God in every J3 or every house church, it would be an awesome thing. Because every micro church or kingdom family, we want to have a down, up, in and out manifestation of love. The down love of God is the word and spirit. So that's the word. This is the word piece. The down love of God is the word and spirit. The up love of God is worship and praise. The in love of God is ministering to one another. The out love of God is sharing what you heard with an unbeliever. And finding the woman or man of peace. And beginning to build a bridge of love to them. Okay? My hope is that our, that our kingdom families get a resurgence of life and wholeness and maturity to where we're doing the down, up, in, and out love of God, to where we're actually building love bridges to people in the community that are, that are open to the Lord. And, and then they connect relationally and they have a family to slide into when they meet Jesus. How cool is that, right? They come into a living room where it's more natural than a building like this, and they find Jesus and Jesus' people in a living room. That's where we want to go, right? All right, so find your J3. Let me pray for you first. Father, right now, reduce fear, increase faith, and give us a culture of, of being the church rather than doing it, or going to it, excuse me, than going to it. And God, give everybody the f fun and joy in this uh, time together in Jesus' name. Okay, find your J3. I hate to interrupt. Should I stop it? Should I just forget it? Yeah, if you have kids, get your kids. But here's the deal. I'd love, I'd love a quick debrief. A couple of people just, debriefing is kind of a fun to reflect. And every time you have a J3, not every time, but 
most of the time in a, in a kingdom family or a J3, it's good to kind of take a moment and debrief. How do we do? Do we connect? You know, did we get, did, did what we want to see happen, happen? Debriefing is really good because then you can get a chance to learn. What does Shram call a debrief, Tim? We call it a debrief. <laughs> See, we're sinking in the spirit. Shram and Rock are one. A check-in, that's good. Okay, so uh, anybody want to do a little reflection over how that landed? I did a debrief over here. I'm going to share with us, if you don't mind, I don't want to put you, how did that land on you? Um, well, my name is Bailey. Um, I did, I did like it. It was fun to connect at first. It was going to be just Michael and I, because we're a little bit more on the shy side. But we got pulled into another group, and it was, it was good. Good. See, isn't that great? Give the Lord a little hand. That, that's kind of fun. So you enjoyed doing church like that. Bailey said, "I like this. I really could get into that." So, yeah, that that that's that means tons to me because. Because you now own it and participated, and you're proactive, and that's a lot more fun when everybody has voice, right? Anybody else want to debrief? I liked it because um, sometimes I have a little different interpretation, and thanks to Carol, she gave us um, information on uh, the, the Passion Translation and how to use the footnotes, in the the U version Bible app, and I was like, "Oh, this is gold." Yeah. It's it, you know. So we, you know, iron sharpens iron, yeah. and that was that was a great thing. Yeah, I love that. And we encourage three because uh, in this sequence of maturity, uh, a, a, a bond of two is what a child has with their mother. But something happens even more deeply in maturity if you add a third person and then you get that kind of feedback and the feedback creates growth it creates growth and it creates a sense of identify identity with a belonging a group of belonging so beautiful point anybody else on a debrief of how that landed Derek DC oh he was Yes. Um, you know, it was just cool to uh, to get together with the guys. It was, it was awesome to look around and just to see it, people engaging with the word, people yeah. engaging with each other, prayers. Like, wow, so many good things are happening right now. I think it's just uh, a great thing that isn't often happening in our culture. Right. You know, so it's just a great. And so I, I think it was great for us for um, just I felt very connected. I felt like there's a lot of trust, a lot of ability right. to just open hearts and uh all of us during the short little time of quiet just felt like we heard something, you know, from the Lord of encouragement. And so it was awesome. So, oh, yeah, super simple. Come on. Yeah. yeah, super simple. You know, honestly, with this model like this, even those questions right there, a 12-year-old could facilitate this. A 10-year-old could facilitate this. And, and it, so it's easy enough to reproduce, but it's deep enough to produce change. Okay? That's important. We need a reproducible model. Now, how about, did you catch the part about sharing with somebody else what you heard? Now, now this is a key piece that we want to start adding to our culture. For example, I could be in a conversation with somebody who says, you know what, I heard something really simple from the Lord today about remaining in his love. And I just wanted to share that with you. So I share out of the overflow of my encounter with the word and the spirit and then I share, hey, you know what? Would you mind me? I would love to tell you what I just sensed God say to me today. And you can do that with a complete new friend or stranger. It sounds weird, but actually it will intrigue them. So in other words, an important part of the cycle is sharing with someone else what the Lord said to you. Okay? How many of you think you could begin to add that to your cycle? It's a little, that, that's going to take a little more stretch, but it actually works. So in the Discovery Bible uh, study sequence, they want that piece added. Okay? Everybody got that? Okay, good. 
All right, let's close up. I'll pray. Bless you guys. How many of you know now we've got a reproducible model that could be put into a kingdom family or a J3 now? Now. You could take that sheet of paper. Just change the scripture. Go through the book of Mark. You could just change the scripture and you could do that every time and have a win with Jesus. That little, that little model right there. Okay, Jesus, thank you for this time. Thank you for this family. Thank you, Lord, for all the ways that you bless and love us. We are overwhelmed with your love and kindness. And now, Lord, uh, whatever we're gonna be dealing with this week, we ask for your grace because life throws at us more things than we can handle without you. So we need you more, more, more grace. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen.